Welcome to the Easy Project with your boy Eddie. And your boy Zibby T. This podcast is about athletes transitioning into business and also the business leaders around the Gold Coast. And Zebby and I have played NRL for 10 plus years. And we're utilizing the skills that we've learned over our NRL career to inspire others to chase their dreams and goals. Let's, Let's go. go. Hey, welcome everybody. Uh, episode seven, uh, back again. It's just only me and my boy Eddie Pettibone. How you been, brother? Been good, mate. What about yourself? <laughs> I've been good, man. Um, just had a bit of a giggle with us trying to do our intro video, man. It's just so... <laughs> man, we got a lot of bloopers, eh, bro? <laughs> I think Emily's got, Emily's got us. <laughs> I think she's got us, mate. So, uh, yeah, man. Yeah. Look, got a couple of questions, mate. I'm going to start off with... First, uh, first, so, first, what? first. Sorry, I, I, I just want to cut you off. Babe, Congratulations. 75 hard. Ooh, thanks, mate. 75 hard. I know it's a tough ask. Um, I did it last year. And remember when we spoke about it in the first episode, uh, our intro episode, so yeah, yeah. I'll never do it again. So what's your thought process going forward about it now? What do you reckon? Have a clean lifestyle, I think. Clean lifestyle? Clean lifestyle. Um, kind of found out what I um, – the stuff that I identified that was kind of holding me back from mm. being the best I can be. But we'll definitely get to that topic, mate. I've got, I've got a few <laughs> things I want to break in, mate. Sorry, sorry, Is that all right? sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, let's go, let's go. go. All right, we'll get, wait, easy laughs. Yep. Okay, we're just going to keep this nice and easy. Nice and easy, eh? A couple easy crack-ups, mate. Look, I've got a quick question. Look, life is too short, so let's have a bit of a giggle here, mate. What a couple questions from, from people outside of you. They asked me about a lookalike. What's a lookalike, you reckon, from you, mate? A lookalike for me? Yeah. Um, Uncle Bully from no. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that time we had long hair Like Uncle Bully bro? Yeah man I kept on Man that was pretty much My nickname all of, The whole time <laughs> that I was at the Titans Calling me Uncle Uncle Bully um, Koro Does everyone know Who Uncle Bully is I don't know Yeah we'll just keep it at that okay? we'll Don't worry we'll put uh, We'll get M's to put the picture up On the, <laughs> on the party <laughs> Nah Jason Momoa hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Shut off <laughs> yeah, nah, now nah, nah. Nah. Alright, look alike Uncle Bully Yeah. What about you? Hey, you've got a couple Denzel Denzel Hey, Who else? do I look like Denzel? <laughs> Eddie Murphy? Nah <laughs> Hey, not the mo Denzel Denzel Mate, that's what your nickname was eh, During your, your South days, I think Everyone yeah. calls you Denzel Equaliser Yeah the equaliser, one, hey man, two, that's, three. Man, you should take that, bro. What? Take, take the Denzel. Yeah. I don't 100%. know if I'll, 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 I could never take the Uncle Bully. You should. No. <laughs> no way. No Great way. hair back, show yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just a quick question. Who was a crack up in the game? Man, I, I had a couple. Um, so I played at the Knights. Yeah. Um, I, I coo. Ooh, Ooh, Aquila. Yeah, Aquila, man, one of the probably the funniest Fijians that you ever meet. Oh. Uh, just heaps of NO, heaps of NO, but sometimes he's a good Just bus. real funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, Cooper Vuna was uh, an, another one. Um, DJ. Yeah. DJ Vuna. Good old one of the boys, Vuna, like uh, back at Newcastle. He was really funny as well. And towards the uh, back end, we played at the Titans with your boy, Connie. Big Horror. con man. <laughs> The Instagram oh. influencer. He's an influencer. <laughs> For um, budget smugglers. Oh, I love his mate, videos. Please. I love it. Please. <laughs> I don't want to see that, mate. <laughs> He's got the mad videos. Big Aku, man. Yeah. He had the biggest ass I've ever seen in my yeah, life, man. man. Like, literally. Bro, you know, and he used to. He Did he squat it? Did he squat it? He used to always just shake it every time. Like, but how fast was he, bro? Yeah, he's fast. He's probably got the longest tongue I've ever seen, too. What? The longest tongue. <laughs> No, he's a good value to have, man. He is, he is. Man, and bro, just what a freak he he's was a on the field. Up, eh? Freak, man. Because he played Australia and New South Wales within the first three years of his career. I know, he was such a good player. He was a gun. He was gun. hard to tackle. Gun and, and funny. Yeah. Always brought the boys together. Yeah. Always cared too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I love about um, Oku. Who's he's your funniest? A, he's a good family. Um, funniest? Man, Isaac Luke. <laughs> <laughs> he was a character. Bro, that's a true Uncle Bully. He's a true Uncle Bully. Yeah, Bully, yeah, yeah. my man. But he was a crack up. But he made us laugh, man. The stories he used to make, man, it was unbelievable. He's still doing the same thing. I haven't seen him in a while, but I miss that guy. Get him on. I know. We've got to get Bully, him on. We've got to get you on, bro. He's a good lad. Yeah. 
So that's yeah, it was him. Tools was funny. <laughs> Big Tully. <laughs> oh, <laughs> bro, you know what I've been man. seeing lately? Um, PT mocking the. Uh, oh, I'm yeah. gonna shit out of you too. <laughs> yeah, no, Those PT, boys are back. Bo- oh, I love them. Keep keep them coming, PT. I love them videos. Oh mate, he always gets me all the time, mate. Oh, PT, he's looking good, man. I know. Man, the he's CrossFit, um, the CrossFit doing that king now. I know. We're to get him on board too. CrossFit, he's going good. At, he's done his muscle ups and all that. It's good to see. He's a beast. Him and Jade, eh? just yeah. killing it in yeah, the gym. Man. That's good, man. Like uh, I feel like you know we talk about like getting into the fitness world. And, yeah, like, yeah. By the, you know, it's good to see. Yeah. All right, man. Look, our topic today is mindset. Mm. Mm. Big one. Mindset. Big one, big one. Look, I've got a couple of questions, but um, what was your mindset like playing the game of rugby league? Take man. us back. Take us back. I'll, t- I, I, I'll be honest. Like, I'll take you back to, you know, obviously when I was a young kid, my mindset was that, like, I loved the game so much that I just wanted to just – I just wanted to play it every single weekend. Yeah. Um, whenever you had the chance to go out in the school playground and play it, I just wanted to play tackle rope, tackle footy. Yeah. And it's funny, like it's the same as like when you go out and you go into these schools, they ask it, hey, sir, can we play tackle footy? He says, nah, mate. <laughs> but then you think- <laughs> Did you get to a Christian, kid, was it like a Catholic Christian school or nah, was it a private school? Was public private? school when I was young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, nah, nah, no, 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 uh, no private schools here, bro. Um, <laughs> humble beginnings, bro. So, <laughs> and then um, got a scholarship to go to a to a Catholic school, which yep. is Blacktown Patrician Brothers. Oh, but, a good um, school, man. Yeah, that was a, that was a good school. We had some good players in, and like I think um, you know back then, a couple of the brothers <laughs> went on to play in our role as well. But um, just the mindset and all that, like it goes in stages. I yeah. feel like as a young kid, like you want to just religiously play the game, and then. You get to that point, okay, sweet. I feel like I'm I'm good enough to like, you know, get into it really, mm. really good. You either have it or you don't. Yeah. See, that was a that was a problem with us as young kids. Like, you're good enough to to keep playing and play within those division ones uh, teams when as a young kid. Yeah. So when I started taking it serious was at a young age, hundred percent. I took yeah. it took it serious probably like at the age of twelve or thirteen. Like yeah, we're yeah. always making grand finals lost a lot of grand finals as a as a young kid but then like i said i always never got picked in any of these teams like rep squads and all that i had to wait till i was actually 18 to play my first rep game yeah you know and that was for paramount eels man that was crazy because i remember um i've always seen your name floating around obviously you're a lot older than me Mm. but i remember seeing your name floating around all the time when we were younger so I was thinking, man, this guy is a gun, eh? And we watched, I think I watched one of your games growing mm. up as a kid because I think it was in Harold Matthews at the time. Yeah. And you were playing the game. I think it was at Prems or Jersey Flag, one yeah. of them. And we were watching the game. Ah, you were a gun, man. You are a bit bigger then, eh? <laughs> yeah, than what I you are I was, now. Hey, a bit chubbier. Um, played, played in the back row. Um, played, like it was good. Like when I was um, at Parramatta, like we... We, I, I went straight into SG Ball, but then I just stayed in the system after that. Yeah. So, played Jersey Fleck, and then, like, it was the time when the Jersey Fleck, they, they were uncertain about how they were going to structure that comp. Yeah, yeah. So, one year we had, like, a nine-round Jersey Fleck comp. Yeah, And then the right. next year it went on to 25 rounds. Yeah, yeah. And then the year after that, they it went, they scrapped it. I don't know what happened. So, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it was real confusing as us. So, we got a... We, we were pretty good as young kids. We kept on getting a bite of the cherry. Yeah. So, because there was always competitions going mm. on. And then they brought in the NYC later on. But um, <clears throat> when I started playing Premier League in that, so there was one year when I went SG ball and played played a little bit of Jersey Fleck and then I played Premier League and played Premier League with like Willie Tonga when he was at Parramatta Eels and like Kylie Lulua, all them dudes, uh, Dave Solomona and all that. And I was only a young kid and I was in awe of these dudes. And bro, like we played against um, Bulldogs, and I had Jonathan Thurston, Roy Asatasi, Willie, Willie Talau, and all mm. that. And I was going, man, these guys are superstars, man. And the hits were like heavier, Heavy, yeah, and yeah. it was fast. It actually felt like an NRL game, yeah. Because when I remember playing, making my debut, that first Premier League game felt like an NRL game. Yeah. Have you always chased the um, NRL dream? Like, you know, yeah. you start at third and you're like, nah, that's it, NRL. Yeah, 100%. That's me. Yeah, I chased it. I chased it hard. Like, I, I just knew, man, I want to do whatever I can to get get to, get to that to that yeah. level. 
it wasn't easy. Yeah. It wasn't easy at all. It was uh it was tough at times, but it's just like you know when you when you look at kids today and it says um talent doesn't always take you to your destination. Yeah, yeah. Hard work, dedication and all that does. Yeah. So that was that was my mindset. I yeah. just knew I had to be one of the hardest workers yeah. in the room, like behind closed doors, yeah, you know, yeah. behind the scenes. So like I'll do a session at Parramatta, then <laughs> I'll go go to the gym and do a sneaky, sneaky arms and yeah. chest and all those ones, you know, just to try and build up my strength a bit because mm-hmm. I wasn't the, wasn't the strongest, wasn't the fastest. Just, but I had the mindset to, to just work harder. Work harder, mm. 100%. And I think I see that today, mm. like you still got that drive and that push to, to yeah. win. Because I know like, having you on my team, when we do those teams of three or four, yeah. when you're on my team, I'm like, yes, he can carry <laughs> us a bit. <laughs> know, like he can carry just, us, man. You know, you, you know when you're like looking at the gym program and you look 10 cows for like the elite and yeah. he goes, Shh, 12. <laughs> oh, yeah. 12. Uh, that's you 12, every time, mate. 12, 14. Just do 14 so we can get it done quicker. That's you every time. I don't know if that's cheating though. But if nah. you can do the 14 and get and get it done quicker... You might as well get hard at it. Well, that shows your mindset. Mm. So you've, you would you would have picked that up over time. At the age of thirteen, you mm. wanted to play in RL. Then you went, okay, for me to get to that top, I need to do mm. that little bit extra all the time. Like you said, ten cows. Now, nah, we're doing fourteen. <laughs> and we're like, what? <laughs> so you're you're not normal. Yeah. <laughs> nah, like, but but it's all it's within all of us. So yeah. you're the same too. Like, you know, we're built different. Yeah. You know, we. We, we put something in our minds. Um, it's crazy when, like, um, when we had Mick on last week and um, or a couple of weeks back, and he goes, you know, he says that he's going to start something. Yeah. Because he put it out in the universe. You, you, you said it. Yeah, yeah. So when you put something out in the universe, like, that you're going to do it. Yeah. You can't, you can't help yourself but chase it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm a massive believer of the law of attraction, ma- massive believer of like manifesting and all that yeah. kind of stuff. Because like if you say you're going to do something, like I'm, I'm one of those dudes that will like see like there's a High Rocks event coming up. Yeah. And those of you that know what High Rocks is, it's it's a pretty tough event. Yeah. And then you've got like these turf games coming up at the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. And then you've got like charity runs like with the gym and all that kind of stuff. And I'm the first one to sign up for them. Of course. Because you know what I mean? Because yeah, like yeah. you just go something to work towards. Because yeah. you miss that. You miss that like when you're in that transition that phase. That yeah, competition. Yeah. Um, just the motivation to go out and do something for yourself. Yeah, like you've just right. done the 75 hard. So you should know the feeling of fulfillment. And like I, I, I knew that feeling, but like straight after it, I couldn't wait to go and have, have chocolate. some some <laughs> chocolate and <laughs> and a sip of a um, some fizzy drinks and, <laughs> and some ice cream. Yeah, yeah. Well, the mindset shift there. Eh? It's crazy mm. how um, even the way you speak. Mm. Like I feel like when you change your vocabulary yeah. and you speak in positiveness, yeah. things change. Yeah. Like you know, like when we spoke with Barty and that. Yeah. You know, they they spoke about. Oh, I can't do this, I can't do that. But then he was like, no, how can I do this? Yeah. How can I do that? And I feel the like when you, Yeah, th- those little things is massive, bro. Because when you when you change the vocab and the way you speak and you set something, like you want to do high rocks. Yeah. Like that's the, probably one of the hardest events I've ever seen. I've yeah. seen the I've seen yeah, the I sessions. I was like, wow. No, now I've got to start training for now it. Now you got to start like, training for like it. Like you think about it, like you don't want to go in that under underdone. Yeah. Like there's a lot of there's a, it's just it's like high repetitions of interval training yeah. with like, you know, your your sled pushes yeah. and your burpee broad jumps and all that kind of stuff. And I'm doing the singles too. And that's going to probably be the most challenging thing is like, man, I just want to finish it. And, but a little bit in me says, but I want a good time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be that dude that goes there and just full like. Zero. Full zero. Yeah, You'll be zero. Yeah. You'll be zero, mate. You'll be zero, mate. <laughs> yeah, I'm already training for it now. I, like, what about me? When I done my first running session yesterday. Mad invite. S- Thanks for the invite, mate. <laughs> done a six-kilometer run and I was like, well, I need some new shoes. I'm going to put some new shoes. <laughs> well, there you go. But it's cool, man, because um, like, obviously the topic is mindset. Mm. I feel like every time... Every day you want to challenge yourself, eh? Yeah. And like I know that I've noticed you over the time playing the rugby league. Like I didn't know you playing rugby league at the time. I only just seen you and we played against each other. Yeah. How is your mindset today? I'd say it's I'd say it's the same. 
Um, I'd say like winning mentality. Yeah. Um, I like to be sort of like I'm disciplined, like punctual. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're on time. You, you get what I mean? Like, you know, when you're, when someone says two feet over the line, yeah, yeah. I'm that dude, two yeah, feet yeah. over the line. And then you're looking across the ring and goes, oi, two feet over the line, you know, like, yeah. cause it's like, you're taking shortcuts. Yeah, yeah. So it's funny, but like, um, when you say that, it goes, when you look at those people that do that, like the mindset is, oh, if they can, if they're happy to not put one leg over the line, what does yeah. that tell you about their, about their mindset going into yeah. life after footy? Exactly. Like, I know if I was to get into business with, with like, you know, ex-teammates, that's the first thing I'd probably think about. What was yeah. he like as a trainer? Yeah. Like, was he, did he have that mindset of just pushing himself and, that yeah. and have that hunger and drive? Yeah. So, like, you know what it's like, man. Yeah. Those little mannerisms that you learn over your career, it should be transferable over into the, into yeah. the real world. And like you said, the real world's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure, man. Freak, I'm off you during our podcast, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, um, how would you say? Like, uh, for me, when I finished, mm. I kind of went off the rails a bit, just started eating whatever I wanted. Yeah, I know. Bro. I was what drinking heaps every day and like, I literally I put on so a, much weight over you, time. You needed a zip tie over in France with you, bro. <laughs> what was going on, bro? Tell I me was, about that time, man. Like, I think I was taking a piss, I think. <laughs> I think I was just milking. Too much baguettes, too much pine oh, chocolates. What else 100%. was there? I don't know. I think I was just comf getting comfortable. Like I was, you know, in France, just taking a piss really, mm. just having a laugh. And But really I was just traveling and experiencing yeah. life really with my kids. Oh, and you got to, and you, and you love doing that. You love being with your family. You love traveling and doing all that kind of stuff. Because yeah. it's it's memories that you won't ever get back. You get what I mean? Like 100%. I remember when we were there, we went to Portugal, went to uh you know, Cyprus, we went to a lot of really good places. Yeah. It would, you would have been the same too. Yeah. Like you have to. Yeah. You have to take advantage of that. <laughs> yeah. You can't just go there and just like sit at home and do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I took it for granted too. Like, But I, that's the French mindset, eh? They expect you to. <laughs> 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 the clubs that recruit you to go over there play. Oh, mate, you're supposed to kill it, man. <laughs> you're supposed so, to kill it, man. Yeah. Nah, but I'm going on holidays to be Spain. written that in Spain. <laughs> but I know, man. So like coming back home and that, I went off the rails a bit. Like I'd started, I was training. Like I always had the mentality to train hard. Mm. But then I'll, I'll be, I'll be finishing training and then go have a mad feed somewhere, <laughs> have a few be beers here and there. Yeah. And then by the end of the week, it's like the recycle again. I know. And then I think starting that seventy-five yeah. hard. Now we're on the seventy-five hard topic. Mm. You've done it. Yeah. And me doing the seventy-five hard made me realize it wasn't about um, the weight loss and all that yeah. stuff. It was mainly identifying. Um, weaknesses that I had, mm. you know, going through my life because I'm the biggest procrastinator, honest. Oh, bro, bro. me too. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I'm gonna do something, and then like about two, three hours later, shit, I forgot meant to hang the clothes up. Yeah, but I was, but I remember it going off. Yeah, like you know, I guess I've lost two hours of like drying time on the yeah. line. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Because you're too busy, like there's too much stuff going on in your head. Sorry, ah, it's just too many excuses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is, oh, man. Oh man, not the excuses. Up. So I think that 75 hard kind of opened my eyes to identifying the stuff that I was lacking. Yeah. Um, I was always being a good father, good husband, you know, doing everything right. But just those other things that I uh, I struggled with, like obviously alcohol, mm. um, the binge eating after, <laughs> and then the carry on throughout the whole week was just nah. Had enough. So um, no, but you're good fun, bro. Like, um, so what is it like? Is it what? What? What's the key takeaways from it then? Man, just um, surrounding yourself with people that are gonna see you win. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, and that's something that I've picked up. You know, being in the gym, guys that go up, wake up at four o'clock, yeah. turn up to the gym at five a.m. and have a dig, and yeah. that's. Those are the people you want to be around with because those those the people that get up to go there at five a.m. are mm. winners, bro. Yeah. All, that's how I see it. Yeah, like I, they have to wake up at four, turn up at five, or you probably what wake up at four forty-five and straight out of the door, <laughs> mate. <laughs> straight nah, out of bed, man. No, I'm, I'm, told taking, you, I'm punctual. Hey, I'm disciplined. I'm punctual. <laughs> nah, it's okay. Quarter two. It's a four, mate. <laughs> <clears throat> but um, those key takeaways is pretty much just making those little sacrifices. Mm. It wasn't the big ones. Like I didn't. Completely went off the rails eating, like yeah. you know, I was comfortable. I was eating good foods, whole foods, and just I probably took out alcohol out was was gone, 
and then just chocolates and that because I got the yeah. biggest sweet tooth, so that's gone. Yeah. So <laughs> once I cut that out, it started to slowly see a little bit of results here and there. Have you have you had any desire to go and have a have a chocolate? Not gonna lie, I had Max Brenner yeah. on Sunday, <laughs> and I felt so sick, bro. Did you? Honestly, it's because so your body's um, yeah, it's gonna get back, get used to it if you keep doing it. Yeah, yeah. But it's up to you. It's just that, like that. That it's like a mindset thing now. So, yeah. I, do, I don't, I don't crave it anymore. Yeah. So, it was good to have it because realized, well, nah, that didn't really taste that yeah. good to be honest. Uh, but it is nice mm. for for waiting for that long. But yeah. Yeah, what about yourself? What were the key takes for you in that 75 hour? Because everyone's different. Yeah. You know um, I mean? Yeah, it was, you know, there was times, there was tough times during it, like where, you know, I I felt like I was overdoing it. Like I was, sometimes I'd do like two proper sessions during a day. And because and I was in that, um, in that stage, I kept doing it, like it caught up with me. Yeah. And then I had to battle through through it like yeah. we've we've been sick and that and that wasn't you know i remember one time like um i had to like sleep for man i don't usually sleep but yeah. i had to sleep during the day and i took about you know almost four to five hours sleep because eh? i needed it it was on the weekend Damn. needed it and i felt so good for it but like my key takeaways is pretty much doing something every single day yeah. like i enjoyed the reading um and all that kind of stuff because i felt like it like it helped me with like um, I struggle sometimes with the with the vocab kind of stuff and that, yeah. and that's probably my biggest downfall when when like we're talking about like self confidence and that. Yeah. I've got to believe in myself a little bit more, and I think I need to probably go back to probably reading you know a couple more pages a day. Yeah, because I, I as soon as that stop I stop. Yeah, and um and I know that works, man. Reading yeah. is so powerful. So good. And, eh? and like you know reading different books and all that. I, man. Probably think I should go back to doing stuff like that more. Yeah. By finding the time to do it. Yeah. Like, I feel like uh, two two times work just like I find myself on the laptop a lot yeah. trying to and procrastinating on what I should be doing. Yeah. And it does it does consume a lot of energy and time. Yeah. And then you forget the the real good things that do help you. Yeah. Like yeah. a simple like reading ten pages. Yeah. That's, that that that's good and um. Drinking water, <laughs> yeah. as much as I, man, there's a massive difference from going and drinking a lot of water yeah. to not drinking any during the day. You can you can feel the massive like difference. Yeah. So I love that out of it. So I'll make sure I've got a Frank Green black one. Love carrying that around um, and try and drink at least two of them a day. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's good, but um, but like you know, for for myself being a trainer coach at at a gym, I've got a got to make sure that um you know i'm leading by example and doing yeah, the right yeah. things and that and then sometimes um you know when it comes to the dieting thing like i like having a cheap meal Balance. one twice or even three or four times a week <laughs> <laughs> but it's good uh, um i i have nothing bad to say about the 75 heart yeah. if anything seeing yourself and tackers like actually finish it um that's brad takarangi by the way um like you guys finishing it, it just inspired me to go, oh man, should I have another crack at it? Yeah. You know, you know, we do talk, man, it's such a hard challenge, but yeah. then you think about it, then what's the next challenge? What's your next go-to, you know? Yeah. Full, so full. what are you, you going to do next? So like you think about it when you're in that mindset, like for me, like maybe 75 hard shouldn't be the norm, but like you should be at least getting out that one session per day yeah. easy. Um, the drinking the water should be easy. Mm. And then the reading the... The ten pages should be easy. Yeah, you know, I think if you're going to take something out of that, it should be those three things. Yeah, I think it's yeah. just finding the balance. Mm. You know, like we love training. Yeah, like I love it. Love turning up every morning, and having yeah. a session. Because I know if I get a session, I feel good the whole day. Yeah. If I don't train, I can feel the difference. Like yeah. you, you'd, yeah. you'd notice that as well. One hundred percent. You get when stressed you stressed out. Yeah. Because <laughs> you, you you're used to because you yeah. see your body just um. Just doing that stuff. Yeah. So Especially you, in the morning. And yeah. it's crazy. It's only 45 minutes yeah. of work. Like, that's it. And then the whole day, I'm feeling great. So, you like, because you've got that after. routine of coming to the gym 5 a.m. every single morning, okay? And you all of a sudden, oh, damn it, I slept in. Yeah. Like, you're chasing. You're chasing that. You're chasing that, um, that feeling. 
yeah. and you don't know because you've stuffed up your routine and yeah. you don't know when to fit it in. And then you, you try fit it in and you fit it in during the day and you guess it's not the same. Yeah, yeah. So that's why people are so stuck on that routine. Yeah. I've got to get that done first because that ticks a lot of the boxes straight away. Yeah. First thing in the morning. Like it's one of the good dopamines. Yeah. You know 100%, what I mean? Yeah. You, you get to get that feeling. Like waking up is the hardest part. Once you get there, it's like, oh man, yeah. it's easy work. Oh uh, yeah, easy work. That's it. <laughs> hey, hey, if it, hey man, it's easy, man. Just get up and do it. <laughs> but definitely, it's uh, it shifts your mind to like the what you can, what you can do. Because mm. I feel like I don't know for us rugby league players or professional athletes, you cap yourself a lot. Yeah, I feel like we cap ourselves a lot. Yeah. Like I speak to a lot of the boys and like, yeah, man, I get 150K at the mines. I say, yeah. well, why are you capping yourself at 150 when you can earn 300? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. that's the, um, that's where I see life. Like for us to chase, it's not about the money, but I feel like we cap ourselves yeah. a lot. And I think we can go to the extreme if you, if you really wanted to. I feel like if you, you know, everyone needs to, everyone needs to make money to, to, you know, to support their families and all that kind of stuff. And that's, um, and that's good, like in a way where some people may feel comfortable in that state yeah, yeah. And, and they're living life and they're, and they're sweet. But if you take that away from it and just say like, and and don't stress too much about it, yeah. like you said, you, I heard you say it a lot of times, before, it will come, it will yeah. come, it will come once you've, once you've like, you know, you've done the hard work, you've put, you've put the processes and the systems yeah. in place to like go out and chase your dreams. Like it's not going to pay well straight away, but then it's going to, it's going to catch up and, and it's going to reward you in the long yeah. run. And 100%. I think, I think that's the, the biggest takeaway from probably, you know, a couple of the boys that we've had on, they've spoken about that. Yeah. It's, not, it's not a short game. It's a long game. It's a long game, man. You know, if you want to build a business, it's a long game. Yeah. Don't expect to, like, turn, turn money over within the first, um, you know, week first or six two months. or yeah. freaking six months. Like, well, it takes years yeah. to, like, build something special, I, I reckon. 100%. Like if we talk about we talk about a rugby league team, we talk about culture. Yeah. It's like a new coach coming in. Like we talk about the Gold Coast Titans at the moment. They've got Desi in there. Yeah. Like that's not going to happen overnight. Yeah. And like the one thing that probably does um, suck about it or it's just that that club's been through re rebuilding uh, numerous times. Yeah, yeah. But I feel like now they've got like one of the best coaches to ever coach a game yeah. there. It's not going to happen overnight. Yeah. Like it might not happen during this year. Yeah. They might get some good results, but it could be something that it's going to build. Over time. You got to build over time. Yeah, everyone needs to get used to the coaching. Everyone get, needs to get used to, you know, what's going on with around that that yeah. that environment or theirs. Hey, you know? honest question, bro. When mm. you came to Gold Coast, did you feel like, yeah, I was going to lay back here a bit? That the lifestyle's too good here in the Gold Coast. No, nah, well, I was coming back to the NRL. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, mate, like. I just come back from the Super League and I felt like I had one of the best seasons of my career, yeah. like in 2015 for the Catalan yeah, yeah. Dragons. You know, I'm coming off a, I'm coming off a, like a season high for them. Yeah, like, yeah. even though we didn't like go to, to like the heights of winning comps and that over there, yeah. but I feel like I come from the Super League thinking, man, I was one of the best back rollers there. Yeah, yeah. So I came back to the NRL thinking, I want that, yeah. but I want it in the NRL. Yeah. So I came back with that same mindset, but like, once I got here, I just went, "Wow, it's even better because the Gold Coast is beautiful." Yeah. <clears throat> and I thought I was in a beautiful place in Newcastle, had my house there and everything, and I thought I was going back to Newcastle. Yeah. And when my career was done, but I ended up coming and having a stint at the Titans, and it was even better. Yeah, yeah. You, know? you had a really good couple of seasons here. Eh? Had one Played. season. <laughs> <laughs> it was a couple or one? Just one. Was it one? I did one season and I did an off season. Oh yeah, that's right. And then I left. I left to go there. back to to go to St Helens in 2017, and that was tough. Yep. Like we talk about transitions, all right. So going coming back here, like thinking Catalans was nice and beautiful, south of France, and then coming back here yeah. to the Gold Coast, reestablishing, and then going then back. back on the plane back to the Super League. That that hurt, man. Did it? That like, if I'm being honest, you know, yeah. and I don't want to get too deep about it. Like, I struggled. I definitely will. I definitely. That's probably when I think about my injuries in in my career. Yeah. If it wasn't injuries, it was just transitioning to yeah. a new club, and that was definitely the toughest thing. We went. I went back over there. Luke Douglas was there. Yeah. Um, and it was um, man, it was a struggle, man. Yeah. That first like six months, 
they like struggled big time. Like I remember the wifey was struggling too. Yeah. Um, you know, just the weather there was miserable and that. So, but once um, you know, Justin Holbrook came in, but I was ch everything changed. Changed there. Uh, changed my mindset. Yeah. Uh, the way I looked at how to play the back row position. Yeah. Um, and also, man, taught me how to be a really really good team player. Yeah. And our culture was. Bro, like you look around our team at St. Helens, man, we had some guns. He had a gun team, Like, man. you know, you, James Roby, one of the best players that I can put up there, was playing with. And then you had like Johnny Lomax, Alex Wormsley, all these dudes that are England internationals, Mark Percival. Bro, they're all good players, man. And we're yes. just looking around and then like, how how, how aren't we winning? Yeah. But when Justin came, he changed that. Yeah, yeah. that's good. Mm. How was the mindset like on your way back home? Knowing that you're coming back, finishing up. Because I remember we spoke, you, I was mm. trying to get you to France. Yeah, <laughs> yeah true. Eh? Yeah, I was keen, eh? Yeah. I, like, I was keen because, you know, because we enjoyed our time at the Titans. And you're good. You know what? The one thing I can give to you, Eddie, you're a good, you're a good seller, bro. <laughs> 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 trying to sell me the, the what dream. was the team called? The French dream. What, what was the team? Villeneuve, bro. Villeneuve, Villeneuve Leopards. Trying to sell me the Villeneuve Leopards uh, town and everything. <laughs> yes, bros, I'm keen. I'm in. <laughs> but then um, it wasn't, you know, it had wasn't had, the beach yeah had, had a good chat with the wife he goes nah we're, 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 going, we're going home yeah. um, that was tough too coming back of course yeah. it was like we talk about back again to transition like, I remember we've Birdie had, was we've saying had, that yeah we've had two, we've had a lot of times like the hardest thing is for a rugby league player is the fact that you're going over to Super League you're lost you're lost over there like to, to the NRL yeah. like community mm. like everyone goes where's, where's this guy going yeah. He goes, man, he's been playing in the Super League for the last seven years, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, one, no one remembers you. So yeah. then you come back and then you're trying to like get Start back again. into life after footy. You know, I had to transition out the, the slow way. Yeah. Like when I played the Q Cup season at Wynnum, I met That's some right. good dudes there, then played one year with the Mudgeba Redbacks, like yeah. local league, to just get that fix. And then I finally like hung the boots up after 2022. Do you feel like playing rugby, local rugby league was just to get money on the side? <laughs> Do you reckon? No, just an honest question. I I felt I, it, I felt it was like if well, I'm if I'm gonna answer it like honestly, yeah, yeah probably just a little. And a you reckon bit. there's a lot of guys that are playing the game now just just obviously yeah. just to get that fix so that they can keep carrying on yeah. what they're doing? Because I, for me, I know when I came back home, Clive Palmer messaged me and said, "Hey, come and mm. come and play for the Tigers." And I said, yeah, well, show me the show me the money, bro, and I'll come. But like, that was just the footy mindset that yeah. I, I had. Um, come in and was just quickly get that cash, go play the game, yeah. play the best you can, and just get paid on that Sunday. <laughs> but oh, it's man, like... You got some good coins here, huh? eh? <laughs> <laughs> We should put that through a company. I would have claimed it all back later. But uh, yeah, but I, that's, that's the question I ask because I know a lot of guys that are finishing up the... They're not just playing local league, just the fun of it. Mm. You you want to get paid out of yeah. it. You know what I mean? So, which is a, it's a tough thing because I know guys are still trying to find their feet. Uh, there's still a bit of footy in them. Yeah. And plus there's money coming through, especially cash. Yeah. Cash money. Yeah. I, I feel it, it is like that, um, especially when you've got these um, local league competitions down in Newcastle, even in the LOI, mm. man. Like where's, um, where's Tucker's playing? <laughs> You the know. <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? They, like they're all these, like they're getting, they're still getting paid good money. And if you if you're fit enough to do do it, Get why it. why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah. Why not? Yeah, hundred percent. Mate, like keep playing until the legs, you know, fall till off. the wheels fall off. The famous saying, "Till the wheels fall <laughs> off." <laughs> do you see? Do you see? Do you see yourself playing again? No, I, well, I played in the Nines Premier League, and I and oh, I yeah. loved that. That was good fun. Yeah, yeah. Next time you play, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Footy's done for yeah. me, mate. How, okay, let's um, let's let's switch it over to you now, man. It's not just about me. That's bad. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> What's um? Tell us about your mindset growing up as a young kid from where? Mascot. Is it? Mascot. Mascot. Let's go, Grew man. Mascot. Uh, well, growing up, I was a I was a big kid. So, I, growing up as a young kid, I was um I was bullied a lot, mm. man. It's crazy, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I was a I was a black kid. In yeah. this white town, yeah. <laughs> getting bullied a lot. But I was a big, I was a big fat, I was yeah. a big chubby kid yeah, yeah, growing yeah. up. So you're always gonna get picked on all the yeah. time. So I think growing up, I always had that thing. I was like, ah, man, I either go this way 
Yeah. Or I'm going to move forward and change something in my life. Am I going to be a victim or I'm going to do something about it? Mm. You know what I mean? And that was something that I carried myself, which, you know, when you're growing up, like my parents, best parents ever, man, obviously education, they weren't educated about, you know, about us living the life that we were living. Um, they were just there working hard to provide for us, you know what I mean? But as a kid coming through, you didn't realise that you were doing those little changes. So there was, I made it, when I was 12 years old, no, sorry, I was 13, I didn't make any footy reps or nothing. But for me to get, all I wanted to do was lose weight. Mm. So I had to make a commitment to wake up at 4.30 and go for a walk, run True. at 5 every morning. Nice. I did that till I was 16. Nah. All right, but I did that just – it wasn't about footy. It was about me just trying to change my body because yeah. I was a big kid, you know what I mean? Yeah, so man. every every day I did that. The for six days straight. Too. Did it catch up oh, with you? Right. <laughs> All the time, man. Could have come over for something. <laughs> man. Seen your olds on the weekend. But that was, that was, like, that was my life yeah. growing up was that. And then when footy came, I was always playing footy. I didn't really love the game until I started making those little yeah. rep teams. Then it motivated me to play, you know, rep school footy and then play well, I remember, school boys I and remember stuff. Well, I remember like, um, I remember your your age group. I, th I I still to this day reckon your age group was probably the, one of the best age groups that I've um, ever seen as coming through. Um, it would have been like Jared Hayne. Yeah. Um, you know, Chris Michael Keating and all them boys yeah. like when at Parramatta. Yeah. And um, I remember going down and watching uh, Parramatta versus uh, Penrith in the Heron Matthews grand final. Oh, bro. I was just in awe, bro. Like yeah, of the day. talent that was just on show. Yeah. And I know for the Penrith Panthers, it would have been guys like Joseph Paulo. Yeah. Like Masada Michael Jennings, and all yeah. that. Michael Jennings, all them dudes. Tim man. Grant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bro, like they went on and played like respectful NRL crews. Yeah, yeah. You know, still to this day. And you're part of that crew. Yeah. I remember seeing like, you know, you in photos with the New South Wales teams with Aku and all that yeah oh, even Aku's part of that age group yeah eh? yeah no nah, he's a year older yeah oh, he was in that circle yeah in yeah, that yeah circle of friends eh? yeah Bro, that was crazy that age group like yeah. growing up so you so you would have made all those mad rep teams yeah I think over there I just started gaining a bit of confidence yeah and I knew I was like oh for me to stay up the top you got to try you know make do those little extras and stuff yeah. like that so um but yeah Sometimes, yeah. Well, there's, if there was times that I'd take back from playing the NRL career, was I think there was a time in the West Tigers where I kind of um, I lost my way yeah. in the game. Um, started blaming the coach, started blaming the team, the facilities. Because yeah. I, was, I was at South, we yeah. had everything, man. Yeah, true. And then when I moved over to the West Tigers, that was a place probably if I did go back, I changed my mindset, how I look at things. Mm. Um keep that same energy that I was doing ourselves by, you know, turning up the training, you know, with that positive mindset, um, hungry to win, even if you're not playing. How come you left Souths? Like, what was the driving force <laughs> behind you leaving Souths? Because I felt like, man, like, you can't get, a re can't re get rid of Eddie Pettibourne. I think it was money. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <it> was, <laughs> it's always it was, money. It was eh? money, eh? And, you know, as a young kid, when you see money like that, you're like, oh, jump on it straight yeah. away, you know? I'm not saying that Souths didn't pay. Souths paid me a really good wage at the time. I think West Tigers came up with more and then mm. I was like, oh, I want to take more. But sometimes having more money is not mm. the best thing, you know what I mean? But I've learned from it. Um, like I look back now in my career during that time, that was the period where I was like blaming everyone. And it was the worst. Like I was so negative, it was so dark. I was lonely and, yeah. you know, I had, you know, just, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a good place at that time. And once I stepped out of that and I kind of didn't really find my feet till I, got back here. Yeah. Like, not the love of the game, but understanding, wow, there's like more to it than just... So you went, you went West Tigers, but then you went over to Wigan. Is yeah, that I right? left. I wanted to leave. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. I struggled there. So you went to Wigan. Mm. Bro, like, you still made a grand final on that. Yeah. Wigan. What was, what was life like living in... England. England. Oh, it was good. Similar? It was good. But I think the first six months, man, I struggled, bro, because I yeah. was... It was just me and Faye at the time. So we yep. moved out. Like Faye's never, um, that Faye's first time moving out away from her family. Yeah. And that was the same as mine. I was the first as well. I struggled, man, like a little bit, you know. Um, but the game, the atmosphere was amazing. I didn't like the training. It was too cold, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm the same too. Layers of layers on. And like, and then you, you get to the odds at the end of the session, you still got a hoodie and tights and things on. Cause I don't know how they so do it, cold. man. Man, it's too but cold over there. I take my hat off to those guys though that 
They yeah. play week in, week out over there. Um, in the cold. Yeah. Super League. Uh, it's a tough gig. But they've done well this year, man. I thought yeah, I know. beating Penrith, that yeah, was like a massive, biggest massive win, man. Biggest rot? <laughs> 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 nah, nah, you gotta give it to him. Gotta give it to him. Give it to him. Give it to him. Yeah. But yeah, man, that's that was my mindset growing up. Um, till this day, I'm still learning, still growing, trying to find ways to be better. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where we're at now. Like you know, we've built a good relationship over time. We're, we're trying to grow, um, not just in the business area, but as a family. Yeah. Um, and be surrounded and connected by people that are uplifting. It's true what they say about you're a product of your own environment, eh? Yeah. Man, just surround yourself with the good people, man. Yeah. If you want to grow, man, like um, find the people that are going to help you grow, man. Yeah. Yeah. And starting this podcast has been cool. Like, I think it's given me confidence to speak a little bit better. Because, mm. <laughs> man, before this, like, obviously we'll set how, it before. How nervous were we? But, we'll like, I feel like um, when, you listen to, when you listen back on some of the episodes and we can critique ourselves on a few things, yeah. you're just only going to learn – as, as the weeks go on, I yeah. love it, man. I love doing it with you too, man. It's it's a good vibe. Um, you know, we don't we 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 say let's get it structured just a little bit, yeah. come up with like our key points and all that. But like, nah, I think I think we bounce well off each other. Yeah, keep well, I don't know. Do you think we do? Or <laughs> are, you, are you ready? Are you ready to Ask move on? Are you ready to move <laughs> on and sack me as your as your co-host? Or no. do I have to? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been good, bro. It's been good. No, it's been fun. No, it's been cool. No, but it's good. But like, you know, with our circle, we want to bring people along too. Yeah, um, 100%. Bring people along, man. Like, help everyone. Yeah. You know, we've got a lot of the brothers out there. We need to help them. Yeah. And it's yeah. been good. Give them that platform. mindset, you know. Yeah. Well, after, you know, hearing all the other boys speak, that's been amazing, man. Just seeing their journey. And, but I'm learning a lot. Well, we're learning heaps. Learning heaps, like, man. Like, Bart's was so good. Then, then Mick. Mm. You know, then we we got it. We've got a couple of the brothers jump on. Yeah, it's been good, man. It's um, it's only the only way is up from here, I reckon. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Well, we'll leave it at that, man. <laughs> that mindset. Yeah, mindset. Hey, cool. what, what, what what is our key key message for the mindset <sighs> episode? Key message for me, it's um, I think you just got to bring positive uh, positiveness yeah. in your life. I think when you when you wake up in the morning, man, speak. Positiveness, yeah, like all the time. Whether you, even if you don't feel like yeah. it, do it because, yeah. man, you change that, it changes the whole day, your whole perspective of how life is. Yeah, I feel like, um, like I said, I said it in during during this podcast, we're built different. We're ex rugby league players. Yeah, you know, you think about all the pre seasons that you had, like during back in the day, and you guess, frick, that was hard. Yeah, you know, you can, but like, it's like when you go out there and chase a, a goal. Know that you're different to someone else that hasn't been in your shoes. Yeah, yeah. So just remember that as a as an ex athlete mm. that you're built different, and and you know that when you chase that goal, you're gonna do whatever it takes to get to it. Yeah, and achieve it. Hundred percent. So that's my key take out of today's mindset. So good. So good. Too easy. Easy conversations, like always. Hey, I like these ones. Do you? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I like these ones when it's just me and you just vibing off each other. That's it, man. My man. All right, thank nah, you. Awesome, brother. See Sweet. You, bro. Let's go.